Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving into the penultimate episode, at least of season one, for Kin Porsche, episode 13. Um, yeah, last episode, we had all manner of things happening. We had, as we can see in this, where I have it paused, um, Shay and Kim's relationship um, taking a turn. Um, I mean, Kate, shit, wow. Shay found out about Kim being part of the major family, or not last episode, but the prior episode, and he got his feelings hurt a little bit. Kim um, didn't outright say that he didn't care, because we can see that he does care. He's more of an actions man than a words kind of guy, but he also sends mixed signals sometimes. Um, so yeah, Shay kind of went off the rails a little bit um, with his heartbreak and was about to get into some drug fuel shenanigans. And then Kim came along and pulled him out of it. It's like, and Shay's like, "What are you? What are you? Why are you in interrupted? Why it's none of your business? Leave me alone." And then Kim's like, "Well, fine, you do whatever you want." I'm like, "Okay, fine, whatever." maybe we'll talk later I don't know um, and then uncle came back to talk to Porsche about giving him some money and he'll give him some information about how the um, how corn knows Porsche's parents um, which some of y'all let slip down in the comment section because y'all don't know how to avoid given spoilers no matter how many times we ask um, and then we had the whole Pete Vegas thing which felt some type of way about and I said how I felt about it in, in that set of reactions so we're just gonna dive in and see where the things of things go I've already had a number of people in my comment section in my DMs I can't wait for you to get to this oh my god it's so emotional I cried so much which again I've told y'all a million times how much I hate getting spoilers, even if they're not telling me exactly what happens, giving me emotional spoilers and how I'm supposed to feel when it comes to certain things. It makes me know they're coming, so then I don't feel those feelings. So if this isn't the reaction that you were hoping to get, y'all know why. But we're going to dive on in. <laughs> Hello. Okay, it's one way to start the episode. You know how sexy you are. <laughs> sexy you are when you start talking English like this to me. Hello. <laughs> มันแค่หักยอมรับแล้วก็ซื่อสัตย์กับใจตัวเองบ้างมันมึงเหรอกูแค่อยู่กับปัจจุบันรู้สึกอะไรกูก็คิดแค่นั้นเปล่ามันเป็นคนโง่ I don't know if there's any quote unquote good guys in this show everyone is just they're, they're people some of them are worse than others but they're all flawed people อืม so I'm guessing you haven't talked to Ken about the picture you saw, maybe. See, Corn already knows, though. He's like, okay, I'm pretty sure you saw this picture and you got questions now. Because Corn knows everything. What's up? I'm going to talk to you two people. We're going to let it go. 
I won't go that far. I won't go that far. I mean, just looking at his face. <laughs> Lord, what mm. memory is this about to trigger? ไอ้ตระกูลเฮียในแมงไว้ใส่ไม่ได้ทุกคนนี่ปลาชอบกินสุขภาพปลาสดเหรอครับใช่มันดีกับสุขภาพนะปลาแก่แล้วจะต้อง
See, I would be pissed. As someone who enjoys cooking and knows how long it takes to put that effort in to cook something quality, especially if you're cooking it for somebody else, then to have someone just come and destroy that shit, mm -mm. I'd be pissed. I'd start throwing hands right back. Daddy or not. Yeah, not right now. Your daddy pissing me off. Your daddy. ไม่มีอะไรก็เรื่องงานทั่วไปอ่ะแล้วมึงอ่ะก่อนนั้นมีมีอะไรจะคุยกับกู Your dad is keeping secrets mm -hmm. Come on <laughs> I've been advocating for y'all having open honest conversations throughout this series so don't start now we got one episode left. Don't don't start keeping the secrets again. Fairy tale romance we y'all was hoping for. Don't waste the food. Don't waste the food. Why y'all wasted so much damn food in this episode? I don't know what you're trying to do. 
still, baby. Come on, I'm here! Mungyap tayo sa may... Mungyap tayo sa may... Mungyap tayo sa may... กูจะข้ามสนใจไอ้เคนกูฝันร้ายว่าไอ้พีตายแล้ว I'm glad somebody in this family worried about Pete มันกลับบ้านกูบอกมึงแล้วไงกูโทรหายายมันมาเขาบอกไม่ได้กลับนอกไปเที่ยวกับเพื่อนหรือมั้งมึงอย่างโง่เลยปะกูเช็คกันหมดแล้วอะไอ้พีทไม่ได้กลับบ้านทำไมพวกมึงยังอยู่จะงโง่กับโง่แบบนี้วะฮะ I'm glad somebody got sense in the stamp family โอ้ยก็ภารกิจสุดท้ายอะไอ้พีทไปบ้านตระกูลรองบ้านตระกูลรองมึงคิดเหรอว่าคนอย่างไอ้พีทอะจะไปกลับมารายงานด้วยตัวเองโอ้ย That's what I'm saying. Y'all letting the dick cloud your damn judgment. Because Pete was a good man. I don't know why I had to take Tancoon up to come up in here and read the riot act to you guys, but I'm glad somebody in this family got sense. เนี่ยคิดว่ามันทำโตสมปอยแล้วกูท่องเลยดีไว้ก่อนข้าวกูเลยกูไม่เหลือที่อะไรแล้วไม่เหลือแม้กระทั่งความเป็นคนตอนนี้กูรู้สึกแต่ข้าสุดสุดเลยไม่มีตัวตนไม่มีความรู้สึกไม่มีชื่ออะไรนะพีทกูทับตัวเองไม่ไหวแล้วว่าไปกันกูทับตัวเองไม่ไหวแล้วพีทเท่านี้มึงไ
con aquí. Good punch. Knocked his ass clean out. <laughs> Fashion. Fashion. Stop hugging me, please stop hugging me. The wounds are too fresh. Please stop hugging me. Please stop hugging me. Do y'all do y'all not see the blood dripping on, on my shirt? Please stop hugging me. That sweet face. Hiding all kinds of deep dark secrets. มึงอยู่ในสภาพนี้ได้ไงวะไม่เป็นไรหรอกระวังทางบุฟฟ่าตรงมามานิดหน่อยสภาพก็เลยอยากแบบเนี้ยกูไม่ตลกใครทำอะ
person when it comes to his emotions. He may not be able to say the words. He's not been great at saying words or whatnot, but he he does things that shows that he cares. Even, even if it started off as something different and he was just investigating for whatever reason, it morphed itself into what it is now. Oh, that is gorgeous. Gorgeous lighting, oh my god. Hello. Hmm, don't die. Uh, why? Okay. Who is Kaiwa? Who's Tom Akana? That's the best excuse. Who is Tom Akana? Who is Tom Akana? Who is Tom Akana? Who is Tom that's what he said. Ken, I need... Like, obviously, I want you to believe what Pete says so Pete can just have some peace of mind to himself right now. He doesn't feel like going into it, but I need you to be a little bit more observant and not quite so gullible as you've been these last few episodes. Just like, okay, Pete said it's it's fine, he's he's gone, whatever. It's cool. We back in Vegas is real? What's going on? Oh shit. Some love the one. สำหรับเรื่องไอ้พีทมันไม่ยอมบอกกูแต่กูพอเดาได้มันพอยังนะนึกว่าเป็นของฉันนะ oh, okay. oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I was getting very 10 things I hate about you vibes from that this is for my sister this is for me. this ตอนแรกผมก็สงสัยมีเรื่องอะไรที่พี่ลองช่วยพอไม่ได้ด้วยหรอกตอนนี้ผมเก็ตแล้วดีใจนะพอได้ถึงผมอ่ะทําไมมึงถึงต้องช่วยกูขน
flicker. I'm not here to fight. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. I'm not here to fight, girl. But the acting is so good to like switch it up from being in this emotional state to then acting like, oh yeah, I'm fine, I'm good, y'all. What oh, I saw my friend. Oh Lord. Lord. เป็นไงไปตัวสินค้าที่พร้อมผมป้ากูแคนเซิลให้หมดอ่ะทําไมถึงแคนเซิลวะกูมีคนอยากให้มึงไปเจอโลด If you tell me you resurrected my mama from the dead I'm I'm lord ซื้อพี่อยู่มาจากปอเช่มึงเงินเปิดตัวกับป้ากูได้เลยกูอยากเจอพ่อแม่มึงบ้างพ่อครับแม่ครับนี่ชินครับเจ้านายของผม Nothing else. Kenny. Let go of the one I'm with. Love. Mm-hmm. Child and father are very close. Mm-hmm. So I guess we're just not going to talk about them. When I first met them, they were going to kill me. Your daddy knows about my parents. When I first met them, they were going to kill me. When I first met them, they were going to kill me. ก็มาเผาบ้านชีใส่บอปะครับทำลูกพี่ลูกน้องหัวแตกเวลางานก็แอบกินเหล้าจนผมถูกกระทืบเละเทะไปหมดโอ้ยนี่บอทนาลจีส์รันเดียบมาเกิร์ลคุณเจอพวกเขาในครั้งแรกแล้วคุณอยู่ที่นี่แล้วคุณเห็นเขาแล้วคุณเห็นเขาแล้วคุณเห็นเขาแล้วคุณเห็นเขาแล้วคุณเห็นเขาแล้วคุณเห็นเขาแล้วคุณเห็นเขาแล้วคุณเห็นเขาแล้วทำเขาเสียใจก็หลายครั้งแต่เขาก็น่ารัก
and my daddy's kind of semi sort of responsible for y'all being dead a little bit where he knows people เขาแค่มีเขาอยู่ข้างๆจะอยู่ที่ไหนผมก็อยู่ได้ทั้งนั้นเสี่ยวอ่ะอือๆโอเคแต่ก็ <laughs> 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 I mean girl he got both his nipples out you know pointing at him right now so I, I feel like his cheesy lines are the least of his embarrassment <laughs> Okay. Thighs. Ass. Okay. Now we're talking. I'm not upset. Why are you going to play a big one? And you like it, right? Oh, is this the scene? Is this the scene that we got in the trailers? The arms being placed very rudely. Hashtag product placement for the bank in the background. <laughs> I could never, I could never, because I got trust issues and I'm not super duper fond of heights and all this, but I guess it's an adrenaline rush, maybe, I don't know, but I could never, mm -mm. I could never be on either end, definitely could be on the receiving end in this, in, the, in this aspect, because I, I'd be too afraid you push my ass off, but, but then I'd also be too afraid to push somebody's ass off too if I was on the given, mm -mm. It's just, it's too much. Too much. Can't, can't, can't do it. But I'm happy for y'all. Oh, okay. Sure. Not that I mind this, but like, do, do, do y'all ever try maybe like a little, a little flip flop hashtag team verse action? Maybe, maybe Porsche wants to be on top once in a while. And then y'all gonna fuck it up by putting on some full length pajamas, rude. Even in his pajama, he got a damn button allergy. Still a lot of stuff that we left. Okay. คุณหนูคุณหนูครับคุณหนูคุณหนูคุณหนูไปโตคุณหนูจะเย็นใจครับรอฟังข่าวอยู่ห้องดีกว่าคุณหนูไม่ตัดไปคุณหนูจะรู
ออกไปจากบ้านหายไปไหนก็ไม่รู้กูถามอะไรคิดมันก็ไม่ยอมตอบนิ่งสักกับเบื่ออยู่ได้ถ้ามันเกิดขี้อะไรขึ้นเนี่ยกูก็ไม่รู้ไงเป็นตายอะไรยังไงก็ไม่รู้อ่ะเกิดเรื่องอะไรกับมันก็ไม่รู้กูไปช่วยมันไปกูรู้หูมาไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูไปกูTank Kun's the only person who's like, you know what? No, people are missing, and I gotta take care of this. Okay, but where did Shay go? I don't know anything. Bye. Of course they didn't. Why? Why? Why would we? <laughs> Lord. By Ken. I put a lie. Pom, you're a lot canon. Hot chalk don't jam a light, I'm a dying lady. Some I have been one food. Play pot chip at another lot. Meeting. Hold her not on home, Amy, you jing. Pom by bad home, I could go and hear you. I put a lie. มันก็แค่แพ้คนหนึ่งพอดมันอยากให้พอดเชื่อแบบนั้นไงอาบอกกี่ครั้งแล้วว่าไอ้ตะกูลนี่มันเฮี้ยแล้วทำไมเขาต้องทำแบบนั้นวะอาพูดอะไรอ่ะวันนั้นคนที่ยิงพ่อแม่ของพอดรูปเชื่อ Before you die hurt just say a name You still got some breath. Oh, that works too. Okay, so make sure you got the bag with the money too. Oh, he is so out of it right now. There's that button allergy. Secrets come to light eventually. You should have just had an honest conversation. <laughs> of course, I'm sure that's not exactly the kind of thing he wants to have an honest conversation about, but still. Plot 
Plot twist. Now is it a plot twist that I didn't see coming? No, because like I said at the top of this reaction, some of y'all don't know how to keep your mouth shut in the comment section and, you know, just spoil things for everybody else. Um, so, yes, I, I, I knew that was a thing that was going to be coming. Um, but still, doesn't doesn't change the, the twistiness of it in any way, shape, or form. Um, but, yes, I did see that coming. Um, this, this was, this one episode, Lord, so much, so much went down in this episode. Um, we started off with some more Pete in Vegas, having some nice afterglow moments after the sexy time. Just, you know how sexy you are. Mm, this, that, and the other. Oh, mm. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, like, I, I, I guess we, we in a good place right now. Y'all's relationship complicated as fuck, but I, I guess we in a good place right now for it. Um, but then that quickly changed once daddy decided to pay another visit which i already briefly talked on there <laughs> the, 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 he, his visit made no sense to me because like like i'm just thinking what what purpose were you trying what purpose were you serving coming here and slapping me or like yelling at me like what what did daddy come here exactly to do besides that that he couldn't have like told me in a text or over the phone like why did he come all the way out here just to tell me just to ruin my lunch and tell me how disappointed he is that i'm his, his son and i'm just like my mother like okay you already told me that like 700 times you could have just sent me a text i would have been fine um but for whatever reason he came out here ruined my damn lunch that i worked so hard to make for my baby and made me feel some type of way and then gonna smack me with this with his ring with the rudeness, I, I saw him do that little undercover slide, 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 make sure that that nice, big, and bold flat side is there so he can leave that imprint. Like, I, I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. Um, so, obviously, Vegas was feeling some type of way fo following that interaction with Daddy. Um, lots of frustration, lots of anger. And then Pete was also feeling some type of way in the room. Um, having conversations with himself as we've seen him do um, while he's been captive um, but this was just on a different emotional level like it felt very much like someone I mean obviously he's been battling he's been battling a lot in the last couple episodes um, internally and externally but it felt very much like someone who was fighting accepting something that they might be feeling so i won't say that pete loves vegas or anything like that but there's definitely a connection there is a connection that has been established over the last couple of episodes between pete and vegas um some people are here for the connection some people aren't here for the connection um i'm here for the exploration of this connection like i've said it before if it was just a magical, oh, we hugged or we kissed or we had sex and now we're just magically happy together, I'd be like, okay, well, that's, that's a, whatever, that's a waste. But the fact that we're taking the time, episode after episode after episode, to explore these different aspects of this connection that they do have, whether or not you like it or not. I've watched a number of series where y'all love the connections, y'all love the relationships, I'm like, this is trash. Um, and vice versa. So it's like, you know, different strokes for different folks. Um, so whether or not you enjoy the connection between Pete and Vegas or if you agree with it, um, I appreciate the amount of time we're spending actually exploring the connection and rather than just magically saying one day, okay, they're together. And mm -hmm. like, it's, it's a complex series of emotions that they're feeling. So Pete um, is very much conflicted and I feel like part of it is, you know, he's conflicted between wanting to embrace this, you know, sort of forbidden pleasure that he was embracing with Vegas in the last episode. Um, part of it is, you know, him still trying to survive and, you know, 
make sure that he makes it out of this alive because he's still being held prisoner like yes they had the sexy time but he's still in chains he's still handcuffed um and yeah he's just got a lot of things going on so he's he's battling within himself where it's like there's a part of him that enjoyed what happened because he clearly said like i don't he's like i don't like this i don't like this but why didn't i say no why can i say no? and from you know some of the things we saw in the last episode like there are certain parts of it that he enjoyed certain parts of the experience this bond that he enjoyed but yeah there's the other part of him that i think is more a little bit more rational like hey girl what the fuck are you doing like this is vegas we're talking about vegas is bad shit crazy like yes he, i've learned from seeing the interactions with his daddy that he is a very broken individual but you know it doesn't excuse anything that he's done and that's one thing i've liked about how they've explored the character of vegas like they're not excusing a damn thing that he's done they're not trying to say that vegas is a good guy at no point during this are we trying to paint vegas as this good saintly character they just keep giving further explanations as to why he is the way he is they're giving us further exploration into his psyche into his mindset into his family life to explain why he is the way he is why he does the things he does why he has this sort of dynamic with kin with the major family with his dad this that and the other and you know why he treats people like pets and toys and he takes out all of his anger and aggression on people so you know like we're exploring these different aspects of him we're not excusing a damn thing he did we're just explaining and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry, the rain outside has got me distracted. I was wishing for the rain last tangent. I was wishing for the rain last night because last night was Fourth of July, um, and if you live in the states, then you know it is just an abundance of fireworks all fucking night. It does not matter where you live. There's gonna be fireworks all fucking night because people don't know how. They don't know when to quit. Like, I'm of the mindset where it's like, you know what, fireworks are cool for like five minutes and then I'm done. So I don't understand why people want to, like, shoot off fireworks into the wee hours of the morning, 11, 10, 11 at night, 12, midnight, 1 o'clock. I'm like, w there's nothing interesting about this. these fireworks. They, they lost interest like four and a half hours ago. So I was praying for the rain to come so that people would stop firing off fucking fireworks. But the rain never came. Well, now the rain decided to come, but, you know. It's too late now. There's no fucking fireworks. Um, but anyway, sorry. Side tangent. Um, but yeah, Pete very much conflicted with his feelings. And that whole interaction he had there with Vegas after um, Vegas came back and brought him food. And he's like, you know, your, your father was here. He's like, I don't want to talk about it. It's like, what happened to your face? Like, I don't want to talk about it. Are you going to eat or not? And then he just kind of threw the food on the floor. And he's like, don't think just because we had sex that you can say anything you want to me. And then, you know, he started treating him like a, like a animal, a pet again. And it's Vegas's way of trying to have some sort of control over the situation because he is powerless. He is helpless when it comes to his dad. Like, all this time he's wanted to, you know... I don't know necessarily make his dad proud, but he's wanted to be accepted by his dad, and his dad has been this way for a very long time towards him. Um, so, you know, he's been powerless. So how does he show power? How does he show dominance? By, you know, asserting dominance over people and things he feels are weaker than him and that he can assert that dominance. But Pete is a different enigma altogether. Pete is a different, another complicated creature that is meeting Vegas, you know, head on. So that whole interaction they had there and then Pete's just like, just kill me. For the love of God, just kill me. Like I've I've lost everything. I've lost my humanity. I've lost this, that, and the other. I've got nothing left. And while he's talking, like you could see you could see it striking a chord in Vegas. You could see the change in his face, the change in his expression. And it's like, it's it's hitting somewhere close to home for Vegas. He may not relate 100%, but he's relating in some sense. And he's like, oh my God, okay, I didn't mean this. I didn't mean this. So 
Pete's like, if you don't kill me, I'm going to kill myself. And so he grabs a knife and, you know, blood's dripping everywhere. And I'm like, ah, oh, baby, no, Vegas, stop him. Um, and then Vegas, he backs down. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, girl. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I apologize. Please don't don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me, baby. Uh, uh, here, you want to, I'll, I'll let you out. I'll, I'll, I'll unchain you. I'm sorry. Please don't leave me. Become, you got promise. Don't, don't you leave me. Um, how much of that whole... I'm gonna kill myself tomorrow thing that Pete was saying was like factual him feeling that in the moment and how much of it was like a survival tactic to get get Vegas off guard I don't know who can say because at the end of the day Pete is still a very um competent trained you know bodyguard soldier how if you want to think of it so you know at the end of the day his job is to survive and you know complete the mission so Yes, there's a lot of emotions tied up into this, um, and I can't say whether that whole I'm going to kill myself tomorrow if you don't kill me tonight thing was 100% all his emotional just outpouring, or if it was like a psychological warfare tactic to try and get Vegas to back down. I don't know. I don't know. Because um, again, going back to the conversation Pete was having with himself, um, there seems to be a lot of shame and resentment towards himself for what he allowed to happen for what he let himself give into as far as getting involved with vegas um so yeah very very complicated they are very very complicated complex um set of creatures there um and they're interesting they're both very broken broken individuals just making their way through life, making their way through the world, and now they've found another broken individual that they feel some sort of tether to, some sort of connection to. Are they soulmates? I won't go that far to say anything like that. Are they, you know, true loves, destined to be together? I don't know. I don't know. But they are broken people who seem to have found some form of solace in one another on some level, even though it is very complicated and there's a lot of things working against them um yeah it's just an interesting exploration with them um and we didn't get a definitive resolution to their dynamic this episode although although like in that last little scene we had with them at the back of the bar before you know the other bodyguard came into the picture um it seemed as though we were in a place of just kind of mutual understanding that I'm Vegas is sorry for the way he treated Pete because again if Vegas weren't sorry we've seen Vegas do things very cold coldly calculatingly I mean hell to Juan for example we had all kinds of flashbacks of them being together and then being in love this that and the other and he turned around and shot him dead point blank like Vegas is not afraid to get rid of somebody or hurt somebody in some way shape or form once they stop being useful to him but there's something about pete something about the dynamic between him and pete that's different i won't say it's true love or anything like that but it's a different dynamic and he he is genuinely sorry for whatever emotional scar he has caused to be on pete's heart um so I feel like we're understanding that he was sorry. Um, Pete is very conflicted. Obviously, Pete was having a hard time once he got out and he was free, because again, there's a lot of stuff he's been battling with um, that he just doesn't quite know how to come to terms with. Um, that, you know, still not quite come to terms with at the end of this episode. There's a lot of things that are still up in the air as far as they go, but I feel like at least they were in a place of understanding that Vegas is genuinely sorry for what he did to Pete. Um, and Pete, again, has some sort of feelings towards him, some tie, some something that's drawing him to Vegas that he might be willing to give in to more maybe we just gotta wait and see like something else said season two i think has been confirmed i don't know if the source material like the novel 
ends like where season one is going to end or if it extends past and there's more details that we could fill in for season two i don't know i don't know i don't know where their um dynamic's gonna go i don't know if their dynamic is going to be resolved at the end of the season or if that's something that's going to carry over into the next season potentially i don't know we'll have to wait and see but again it's just an interesting exploration between them as you can tell because the episode's been done for god knows how however long and i've just been babbling for like the last 20 minutes about them i haven't gotten to anybody else yet in the pick in the episode i'm going to i promise um shay and kim like i said there in that scene when kim was looking at the picture the little Polaroid that fell off the guitar of Shay, and then he took it to like this little treasure box he had, and it was just full of pictures of Shay. It's like he cares. He cares about Shay, even if it didn't start off that way. It started off with him just using Shay to try and investigate why Porsche was so important to Corn. And he just, he just wanted to know what the big secret was, what was going on. And then in that process, he found himself caring for Shay. Am I going to say that he loves Shay? I won't say that. He hasn't said it, so I won't say it. But there's obviously some level of care there. Um, and he is very much that type of person who's more driven by showing his care versus like outright saying it, where Shay t tends to... Well, no, Shay has been pretty big with the, like, gestures as well as, like, very verbal. And I think that kind of has to do with, you know, him being young and it being his very first love and him being just so excited and over the moon he can't, just can't contain himself. So he's, he's over-the-top gestures, he's writing songs, he's making guitar picks, he's saying I love you, he's doing all this other kind of stuff. Um, and Kim is a lot more subtle a lot more reserve when it comes to his actions and how he displays his affection uh, but there is some level of care there so as we saw there when he was looking at the pictures it's it's very very evident and then when he was showing up there at the end and he's like what do you mean what do you mean about Porsche and Shay? What, what? And he's ready to just go fly off like okay let me go let me go find my baby before the bodyguard like hey your daddy wants to talk to you. Get get your ass inside the house. Shake or Porsche cares. Not, well, of course Porsche cares. Kim cares. He cares. Um, he's not as forthright with his feelings, but he cares, in his own way. Um, and obviously Shay cares, but Shay got his feelings hurt, and he he needs to deal with his. He needs to go through that and deal with those emotions, um, on his own. Um, and then we had. Kin and Porsche, where again, daddy out here playing 4D wizard chess while everybody else is playing Uno or something. Um, daddy's just on a completely different level with his gaming. And he, just when you think, you know, he, he's got everything out in the open and he, he's told you everything he, that you need to know, there's, there's still more stuff. So, he's a very smart man, and he will tell you what he wants to tell you when he wants to tell you. So, if he wants you to know the full and undisclosed truth, he will tell you the full and undisclosed truth. But until then, he will tell you what he wants to tell you. Um, so, all the details we got about the guy who hit his you know, parents with a car accident last episode, and here's his address, blah, 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 do with it what you gotta do. Turns out to be nothing but bullshit, um, because they were actually shot. And they started to make it look like it was Corn who shot them, although they didn't show us Corn shoot him, so we can't assume that it was Corn that shot him. And the gunshot that happened to Uncle T was enough to trigger some memory in Porsche not the full memory because again that's something that's been deeply repressed for God knows however many years at this point so it it's 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 buried deep down in there um, and we may not he may not have even seen who shot like he might have seen the people there and you know hit his face or whatever heard the gunshot and then oh daddy's dead he may not have seen who shot him or maybe he did I don't know but you know we got the plot twist hey that was actually my sister which again wasn't much of a plot twist because i already 
you already knew because you guys told me down in the comment sections. Um, yeah, so we'll see how how that's supposed to play out. So now Corn is actually your uncle, although I think from what I read in the comment section, it was like an adoptive sister, so adoptive uncle, not blood, so Ken and Porsche getting together is not going to be any sort of in blood incest or whatever, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, and that was pretty much Porsche's main storyline in this episode. Just trying to fi figure out what it is that Uncle was keep not keeping secret, but what it, what it is everyone else was keeping secret that Uncle knows, um, and trying to get that information out of Corn and Corn just not not giving in, not giving in, not giving in, even though Corn knows what's up, um, and it's like you know what Corn, <laughs> so much of this <laughs> could have been a boy. <laughs> I feel like I'm giving my same speech again. So much of this could have been avoided if we just had an honest conversation. <laughs> if we just sat down and talked. Like, you've had so many conversations with Porsche at this point where it felt like you were being honest and it felt like you were giving him some sort of genuine information that just turned out to be some bullshit or lie or cover story or whatnot. So, like, if any, like, especially if you weren't the person who killed his parents, then we could have just sat down and had a conversation. Hey, this is what happened. these people killed your parents and I felt responsible so I wanted to take care of your, you know, whatever the case is. Or also, hey, I'm your uncle. Lots of way, there are lots of times throughout this series, I'm not saying we even had to have this conversation from the very beginning. Like, we've had so many conversations at this point. There's so many points throughout these last 13 episodes you could have sat down and just been like, hey, this is what's going on. Would Porsche have gone off the handle or had some bad reaction or been upset? Probably. But, you know, Ken would have dicked him down. We would have got over it. We, we'd be fine. Like, we, we could have crossed this bridge a long time ago. You chose to keep these secrets corn, so... We'll have to wait and see where this is going to lead us for the final episode. Lord, um, is there anything else? Yeah, like I mentioned, I'm glad that Tankoon is the only per Well, I'm not glad he's the only person, but I'm glad someone in this family has some semblance of sense when it comes to the people working in this household. Because why Tankoon had to be the only person who's like, hey, I had a dream about Pete and he is in danger and then i called his grandma grandma said he ain't been home i called his friends they said like why are y'all being so fucking stupid why are y'all being blinded by each other's dicks right now instead of like looking at the facts that hey if pete went on a mission he would have reported his ass directly to you and said hey i finished the mission he would not send you a text or something like that like why y'all being so damn stupid like my baby out there dying and then, you know, similar thing there towards the end when Porsche and Shay went, like, he's the only person who's got some sense of urgency when it comes to looking out for the other people working in this house. So I appreciate Tankoon even more for that. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, we're going to say that's it. Cause I think, I don't know. I jumped all over the damn episode. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications so you'll be notified when all of my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love you. And before you guys go, a shout out to my amazing patrons. I can't begin to express how thankful I am for your support. And if you guys would like to join us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. I love you guys.